Ron? Uh, thanks, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Director, I want to uh, talk some more about fentanyl uh, in the U.S. And what I'm trying to really get at is, you know, can we really stop the fentanyl from coming into the U.S.? When we think about it, with China, with you said over and over, no cooperation whatsoever. Uh, they're sending over the precursors in the Mexican ports on the west side. If China does get disrupted, if somehow they found the desire to help us, would it not be just as easy to go to India and so many other chemical manufacturers? There's so many chemical ca companies in the world that my understanding is that those ch precursors coming from China can be replaced from somewhere else. Is that your understanding? Well, I, uh, it's certainly the case that uh, most of the precursors that we're seeing are coming from China, uh, and there are other places that supply them. Um, it's I not have, a complicated formula. You, you, you'll understand why I'm more sanguine about our ability to work with the Indian government uh, than the Chinese government. Got it. Um, but, yeah. It's going to be pretty hard to stop the precursors. There's lots of chemicals out there, and the problem, as you mentioned, you can make it as easy chemical to make fentanyl in a small space, no agricultural product needed, really cheap to make, five to seven tons will supply the country for the whole year, the death rate we have. That's all it is, five to seven tons, 73 million cars across that border, 200,000 cars every single day on that border. It's a needle in a haystack. It is a job that's pretty close to impossible. So I guess and thinking about it again, those cartels, they're roughly one-third of the gross domestic product of Mexico. The GDP of Mexico is $1.2 trillion. The cartels control through all the other things, tobacco, gasoline, autos, retail, and the, and the illicit piece, roughly $300 billion of the, of the GDP in Mexico. So there's kind of a reason why Obador chose hugs, not guns. We're we on the same page. I agree with what you're scary, saying. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Scary yeah. thought. He's got one third of my country is controlled by armed cartels that are armed as well as he is, as well as he is in many cases. So, and we'll use any method of extortion, bribery, and violence, savagery, you know, beyond what anybody would think would be possible. So that's the mentality we're up against, and the profits are so huge. Do we really think that we're going to be able to stop this at the border, or are we better off to start saying, yeah, let's do all we can. Let's not give up the fight. I mean, we're all in, but we got to focus on the demand side, how we work on research on the brain, dopamine, how we work on education, how we work on treatment, and all the prevention pieces on the demand side, because if we don't slow the demand down, my belief is we're not going to be able to stop the supply. Interrupt it? Yes. But stop it, no. Your thoughts? Well, I, as I, I think said to, to the chairman, I think it's, a, it's, it's the whole continuum. Um, certainly, you can't only deal with the demand side, nor can you only deal with the supply side. Um, I do think there is a lot more uh, work to be done on both. Um, the, uh, you know, I've been down, you mentioned the border, I've been to, you know, multiple locations on the border, talked with the CBP folks, seen firsthand what they're dealing with. Uh, they got a heck of a challenge on their hands. But uh, we have to, uh, I think, aggressively take on the cartels. We have to aggressively take on the distribution networks. We have to work with the Mexican government, and we have to do things like work on the demand side. We have to do all the above. And, and whether we can uh, eliminate it once and for all, uh, you know, that may be a tall order, but we can significantly degrade its effectiveness. I look at some of the work that we did uh, when I was Assistant Attorney General, for example, with the Colombian government, um, you know, on, on cocaine. Uh, and while, you know, that had its fits and starts too, uh, we were able to have some important successes over a number of years working with the Colombian government at the time. So I think there is... There is a hope for more progress, uh, and more progress is needed. But with a government that's so infiltrated uh, from the top to the bottom and so corrupted and so much power in the cartels of the entire country, um, I'm with you. Keep at it, but it's a pretty tall order. And uh, we got to think about more and more on the demand side, and that's what we got to get the budget to think about how we can help folks 
that have an addiction. I yield back. Mr. Elsie. 